Topping our newscast tonight, Prime Minister says new Omicron variant of COVID-19 could impact on government's plan to ease some restrictions. Active cases of COVID-19 fall to 16, but Health Minister warns against complacency. Cashew Hill resident pleased with flood mitigation work in the community. And motorist injured during Sunday morning crash. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Seeing is experiential. Seeing is everyday life. Seeing is style, class, and sheer sophistication. At iMobile Vision Care, we offer state-of-the-art lab technology and the widest variety of quality eyewear from the biggest brands to suit your lifestyle. Stop by our offices at Dr. Rosalie Drive, Lower Gambles to get a comprehensive digital eye exam or call us at 562-7823 and ask about our optical care services. Eye Mobile Vision Care. See and be seen. Good evening. Welcome to the Evening News on ABS and Tigas News Authority. I am Sherilyn Biza. We begin this evening that this country is less than a month away from seeing the lifting of the state of emergency, which has been in place since March of last year. However, with the emergence of the fifth COVID-19 variant of concern, Omicron, Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown warns the, S the state of emergency may be extended yet again. ABS's Rakib Aparicio recaps his comments. At this point, we're in a relatively good place, but the situation is very fluid and could change in a couple of weeks. Hmm. As it stands now, that policy initiative to lift the state of emergency and the curfew on the 23rd still stands, but it could be reviewed and reversed depending on, the, on, on any significant spread of this um, new um, variant. Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown speaking on his weekly radio program on Point FM Saturday. Parliament had approved an extension of the state of emergency to the 27th of December. However, Cabinet last week made the decision to end the SOE earlier on the 23rd of December. As more countries record infections from the COVID-19 Omicron variant, restrictions in this country may persist into the new year. The Prime Minister explains health officials are paying keen attention to the United Kingdom. If there's any significant spread in the United Kingdom, it will end up here in the Caribbean. It will end up here in Antigua and Barbuda. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, Antigua and Barbuda could be one of the first countries uh, in the sense that we now have, you know, relatively good UK traffic. The new variant of concern was first reported to the World Health Organization from South Africa on Wednesday. WHO says early evidence suggests it has a higher reinfection risk than other variants. However, it is not clear if it is more severe. Prime Minister Brown believes the emergence of the new variant highlights the need for the public to get vaccinated. The scientists have actually warned us the last year that if we did not achieve herd immunity quickly, that there would be more transmittable and deadly variants. Hmm. And we're seeing exactly that today. Due to its large number of mutations, the Omicron variant is believed to spread and bypass some of the protections afforded to those vaccinated. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. 
The World Health Organization has provided another update on Omicron, the latest the COVID-19 variant of concern, first identified by South African scientists. Our story is from Jessica Russell. Omicron is the latest variant of concern of the virus that causes COVID-19. The World Health Organization says, however, it is not yet clear whether Omicron is more transmissible than other variants, including Delta. The WHO says the number of people testing positive has risen in areas of South Africa where the variant was first detected, but studies are being done to determine whether this is caused by Omicron or other factors. But preliminary evidence does suggest there may be an increased risk of reinfection, meaning if a person previously had COVID-19, they could more easily become reinfected with Omicron in comparison to other variants. It's unclear whether the new variant causes more severe disease, but initial reports suggest there are increasing rates of hospitalization in South Africa. However, this may just be due to rising infection rates and not a result of specific infection with Omicron. The Global Health Agency says it's working with technical partners to determine whether the variant impacts the efficacy of currently available COVID-19 vaccines. On Friday, the WHO named Omicron a variant of concern. The newest variant has several mutations that may impact how it behaves. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Meanwhile, here at home, active cases of COVID-19 have fallen to 16 after the confirmation there were no new infections and eight additional recoveries up to Friday evening. The health ministry says 201 samples tested all returned negative results. Three of the 16 infected individuals are in hospital, with one of the patients reported to be in severe condition, while the other two are mild. Meanwhile, 56,219 Antigans and Barbudans are fully vaccinated, and 5,199 are partially vaccinated. Meanwhile, Health Minister Sir Malwin Joseph says he's grateful the healthcare workers and responsible citizens for their role in lowering the country's COVID numbers. I think the progress that we have made has to do with two factors. The fact that we have a high percentage of people vaccinated and number two, the majority of people in Antigua and Barbuda continue to observe the protocols. The minister warns people from becoming complacent during the Christmas and New Year holiday season, especially with the emergence of the new variant of concern. Now, in other news, Antigua and Barbuda is projected to see economic growth by the end of the year, despite COVID-19's impact on the country's revenue generation. That update from Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown. We have done a significant amount of work that will position the economy to recover significantly. And the amazing thing is, even though, you know, things have been so hard, uh, so challenging, we're likely to see some growth this year. It is very probable that we could grow the country's economy by about one and a half percent by the end of this year. The nation's leader anticipates 2020 will be the year of economic revival. However, he laments the latest COVID-19 variant creates another threat to the country's recovery. Prime Minister Brown says recovery will require the collective effort of the people. Well, we don't want our people to be fearful. We have to face this, this um, threat head on. And we have to show resilience or continue to show resilience and to continue to position our country's economy to recover in 2022. Correction, the year 2022 was anticipated to be the year of economic revival. And a Cashew Hill resident says he's pleased with the government's efforts to alleviate flooding in his community. The Minister of Health and the Environment, Sir Malwin Joseph, who visited the project Sunday, says he too is satisfied with the progress. Jamie J. Roche reports. A man operates an excavator at a large drain in Cashew Hill. He clears debris and widens the trench. The drain is just behind Andy Samuel's house. And like his neighbors, its overflow floods his home when there's heavy rain. Samuel welcomes the government's efforts to alleviate the issue. It's a good thing. It's a good look. 
at least the water can be flowing without running back on, up on our house and our yard and these things because whenever the flood comes or whenever there's a lot of water, we have water up high, almost, at, almost on my bed. The minister says the Environment Department has secured funds to address the long-standing issue. He says they're concreting over 3,000 feet of drain from Valley Road Church to behind Antigua State College. I am quite pleased that we are embarked on a program to complete this project. It is not going to be uh, halfway or partially done. It is being done professionally with the right uh, technical support. I think the way that this, this um, operator is going, I think within three weeks, we should be able to clear the entire 3,200 feet of water. And then the surveyors will come in, put down the levels, and after that we can, and then uh, we'll have to build a bridge, uh, the, the, the two or three bridges. The minister says the project goes beyond drains and bridges. There's also another aspect of the project, and that is to provide financing for people to build, build back homes more, uh, more resiliently, with greater resilience. So all that is on the cards, and I'm expecting that uh, Cashier will be transformed. He says the project costs around $4 million. The minister says stagnant water was in the drain before the work started here. If you look closely now, you'll see that the water has now begun to flow. And flowing is exactly what the residents here want Whenever there's heavy rainfall. From Castro Hill, I am Jamie J. Roche reporting for ABS News. In other news, a Fries Hill Road man is nursing cuts and bruises after a close call Sunday morning. The 22 year old lost control and drove his van into a large ditch near Bendel's Main Road around 9 30. A passerby reportedly helped the single occupant from the wreckage. Footage from the scene shows emergency medical technicians placing the man into an ambulance. Police say he received deep lacerations to his face and other injuries, but doctors report his wounds are not life-threatening. Wreckers used a telehandler to remove the van from the ditch. And that's the national developments we're following. Sports are up next after this break. Charles ruled out of Junior Pan American Games despite negative COVID-19 test. Joel Rain will have that and other sporting developments after this break. Stay tuned.